Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a relatively new end address condenser microphone. So today we're looking at this guy, the Loughton Audio LS208, and if you are interested in picking this microphone kit up, it will set you back around $600. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone set in neutral mode, connected directly to the 18i 22nd gen, with the gain set just above 3 o'clock, and I of course will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost the audio in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. But now let's talk about what comes in the box, but I can't throw it, it's a bit too heavy and I don't want to break everything. First, you do get this really nice hard shell carrying case. You will of course get the microphone, a shock mount and a standard mount, as well as a 5 8 to 3 8 inch stand adapter, a windscreen, and all of the documentation is downloadable from their website. Next up, as far as the build quality, the microphone feels like an absolute tank. It has an all metal construction and a very, very strong metal mesh grill that I can't get any kind of give out of. On one side, you will find a high pass filter at 120 hertz or 50 hertz, and on the other side, you have a low pass filter at 10 kilohertz or 8 kilohertz. As you move around the microphone, there is nothing else, but as I mentioned, this is an end address microphone, and on the rear, you will find the XLR port. Next up, as far as the specs, the microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 46 decibels, a self noise of 15 dBA, a max SPL of 135 dB, an impedance of 150 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. First thing we'll do is walk through all the onboard filtering of this microphone to show you how it sounds. Right now I'm speaking into the microphone with the low pass and high pass filter turned off and this is how it's sounding. Now I've engaged the 10 kilohertz low pass filter and this is how it sounds and you can really hear those air frequencies just completely rolled off but it does reduce a little bit of that graininess and sibilance that is apparent when you have it just neutral. And now I've switched to the 8 kilohertz low pass filter and this is how it's sounding and high frequencies, what are those? All right, back with the microphone in the neutral mode for a palate cleanser, and this is how it's sounding. Now I've turned on the 50 hertz high pass filter, and this is how it sounds. It is not very aggressive at reducing those lower frequencies, but it just removes some of the trouble frequencies when it comes to rumble or wind noise or anything like that. And now I've switched to the 120 hertz high pass filter, and this is how it's sounding. And again, the high pass filters on this microphone aren't too aggressive, but they do a really nice job at cleaning up some of those lower frequencies without really affecting the tone of the overall recording. Now I am spinning around the LS208 to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We will continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, show you what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, here's how it sounds, and rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Of course we will test the plosives, so please bring pizza pronto, please bring pizza pronto, please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect with the mic in the neutral mode, in the same position with the 50 hertz high pass filter turned on, and in the same position with the 120 hertz high pass filter turned on. Back in the neutral mode, about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and this is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the Leap Gamers, now I am typing on the SAD W keys. Now to test the effectiveness of the provided shock mount, I am tapping on the desk to see how well it does at rejecting that type of noise. And now I am tapping on the boom arm to see how well it does at rejecting that. 
Last test I want to run is to see how the provided foam windscreen affects the tone of the microphone. So right now I'm a couple inches off of the microphone with no low passes and no high passes. And this is how the audio is sounding. And now I've installed the provided foam windscreen at the exact same distance, exact same gain setting. And this is how the audio compares. <laughs> If I just could, you know I would Eat all the pizza in the world and just die It's coming soon I don't really want to die, I just, I really like pizza and it's October So I gotta write some spookier songs and death is spooky, Ooh. All right, so Loughton Audio has successfully made a very unique, very versatile, and all around a very fun condenser mic. And first up, in terms of pros, the microphone did a pretty good job at off-axis and rear rejection, especially for a condenser microphone. Additionally, it is incredibly versatile due to the multiple high-pass and low-pass filters on the microphone. And lastly, it just comes with some awesome accessories. But then in terms of cons, for a condenser microphone, it is really quiet with a sensitivity of around negative 46 decibels. Also, it didn't do a very good job at rejecting plosives at all. It also, in the neutral mode, leans on the side of being a little bit sibilant, and those upper air frequencies tend to get a little bit gritty. And then as far as my overall thoughts of the microphone, on the electric guitar, I absolutely loved it, especially with the 50 hertz high pass filter engaged. It just offered such a clean and punchy low end without ever sounding muddy. And at the same time, it had just the right amount of grit in the upper frequencies to deliver a really aggressive sound. Then on the acoustic guitar, although it did have a full body, I started to hear a little bit of boxiness out of it, and in the upper frequencies, they were just a little bit too sharp for my liking, so you could throw on one of those low-pass filters to roll that off and get a much darker, more ribbon-type sound. Next up for singing, for general use, I do think the higher frequencies were a little bit overboosted, but if you're looking for a more aggressive mix, I think the higher frequencies have just the right amount of bite to them to really accomplish that. And lastly for spoken word, I do think the microphone is a little bit on the sibilant side, but again, that is easily solvable by engaging the 10 kilohertz high pass filter, which gives you more of a standard dynamic sound. And also when you have the low pass filters disengaged, but you throw on the 50 or 120 hertz high pass filter and really eat the microphone, I just think it sounds incredible and gives you this really nice and clear broadcast type sound. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? 
yeah, it's another microphone that I like. Surprise, surprise. We're at a price point where pretty much everything doesn't suck. First, I would really recommend this for music studios. First off, for the versatility with the multiple high pass and low pass filters. And then with my limited testing, I loved it on the electric guitar because it did have such a tight and clean low end. But at the same time, you were able to get that really aggressive and biting sound. But at no point does it start to sound lopsided or top heavy. And secondly, I think this would be an awesome microphone for podcasters or broadcasters who are looking for a more condenser sound, meaning with an extension up into the air frequencies. First off, because it does do a pretty impressive job at background and off-axis rejection, especially for a condenser. And again, because it is so versatile, it has those multiple high-pass and low-pass filters, meaning you're probably going to be able to tune this to fit pretty much anybody's voice. All right, and that is going to wrap up for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. And don't you be shy. If you hated it, let me know what you didn't like in the comments down below. If you want to vote for the gear that I review next, head over to podcastage.com slash vote and cast your votes there. If you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go ahead and click that join button and join at the $5 tier. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos because it is getting expensive. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.